listening to PetLifeRadio.com. You've had a long day at work, and you can't wait to just get home, take off your shoes, plop yourself down in your favorite chair, and relax. Ah. You walk up to your tranquil residential home and your neatly manicured lawn in your quiet suburban neighborhood, put the key in the lock, open the door, and... Yes, the pets have gone wild! What were you thinking? Welcome to the show about everything you always wanted to know about exotic pets. Where to get them, what to feed them, and how to care for them. You'll even find out why some people live with a monkey. Now, here's your host, exotic pet expert and author, Bob Tart. Hey, Bob, what were you thinking? Hi, I'm Bob Tart, author of the books Enslaved by Ducks which was a Wall Street Journal bestseller for all the good that did me, Fall Weather, and Kitty Cornered. And I am here with book, character, Bill, home. And this is our full year in the making birding show, part two, coming to you live from Oregon, Ohio, in the McGee Marsh area. And book, character, Bill, home, we just didn't have time to squeeze the final bits in at the end of last show. He was giving us our Kate May report. Already we're getting phone calls. We are getting phone calls saying, Hey, buddy, why are you leaving us hanging in the middle of that Kate May report? So, um, Bill, would you, uh, you know, tell us the rest? Well, you go to a place like Kate May and you come back with a lot of stories. And I really didn't have a chance to finish what I wanted to say in the first part. And I, you honest, can have all and the I honestly time you don't want. know why I got cut off like that. But I do. I got I do a- I got a phone call, I'm afraid, from uh, the governor of Louisiana, and uh, <laughs> well, that you know, does, he's our producer. That and, does take you know, precedence. I'm, yeah, so I, I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I had no choice. So I wanted to finish my report by saying that if you go to the Cinco de Mayo restaurant in Cape May, have the mole pollo. It's not too spicy, it's delicious, and it's a nice portion. That is such a good tip for any birder. So thank thank you for that. Is uh, anything else about Cape May? It's a lot like Mackinac Island in, in the great in our home great state of Michigan, except you can drive there. Well, I've driven to Mackinac Island before. Really, really. Yes, my car got a little wet. <laughs> 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 but uh, okay, so just mm. we're enjoying a couple of beverages. What was that? So here uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our birding today at McGee Marsh because that's what we did. And uh, we are now in our hotel room in Oregon, Ohio. And we had a, how, how would you describe it? A pretty good day? Stellar. Stellar day. We didn't see a stellar J, but it was a stellar day. <laughs> we would have had to have been in the state of Oregon to see a stellar J. Oh, man, man. That is funny. That's funny, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're really funny today. Yeah. So, uh, that's my job. I guess it is, isn't it? Of yeah. course, it's a year in the making. It ought to be funny. It ought to be funny. Well, I don't want to shortchange our listeners, especially the folks oh, listening no. to us. We on certainly the 30 don't want to do that. They got a lot oh. of ham interference. There's a lot of dots and dashes on top of our show uh-huh. tonight. Uh-huh. And, uh, There's a lot of baloney interference, too. <laughs> 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 so we had, uh, I have to say, our last previous last two years at McGee Marsh were disappointing. I mean, it was fun, but disappointing. Didn't see many birds. Well, that's all, what it came down to, right? We all that changed. Didn't see many birds. All that changed like a sledgehammer on the head. Oh, man. Boom. What happened today was that, um, again, we thought we were going to be dodging raindrops, to drop a phrase, but we weren't. It was, it was sunny. It was sunny as all heck. Shockingly sunny. Yep. And... So we started out on the estuary trail, which uh, we had good luck on last year. And I decided after going today and not seeing much that estuary is my least favorite month of the year. (laughs) In fact, we called it the estuary trail. (laughs) I know why is that. Uh, Because there was nary a bird to be seen except for... Uh, you know, uh, a few yellow warblers and a few vireos, but you did find... Uh, empty Jay's potato chip bag? Swe- Swe- Swainson's thrush. Yes, and you found three, I would say. Three. Three, three thrushes. Three thrushes he found thrashing in, in, a in a trice. And you found Oh, and you found them in a trice. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was excellent birding. But uh, I don't know... 
we went back to uh, the marsh area, and uh, we, we had better luck in, in the marsh. Yes, yes, we did. I, I would say that we um, it started out really pretty strong, because right off the bat we saw a Canada warbler. And we certainly did not see a Canada warbler last year. No, nothing like it. Mm -mm. No, last year all our warblers were in the lower 48. (laughs) But uh, this year, yep, uh, Mr. Canada Warbler came down with his fancy necklace. He's got a fancy black necklace that he wears on uh, a yellow breast. And... uh, Quite, quite a, <laughs> quite an attractive Did bird. Did you get and any had, pictures? No, I didn't get a good picture. <laughs> and he has kind of a little black uh, monocle too. Although he has Does them on he? both a eyes. Monocle. So he has a. He a, has two monocles. He has two monocles. <laughs> I guess that would be a bifocal, wouldn't it? Well, not necessarily. Bifocal is the lens itself is divided in two, not two separate lenses. Oh, okay, so the the correct a pair of glasses could be what he so was cor- wearing. Correct term would be unicycle. Yes, that's much. But, yeah. So we we saw the uh, Canada warbler, and in the same bush, not the same bush as the thrush, but the same bush as the uh, Canada warbler was also a magnolia warbler, and that's mm. another yellow bird with a black necklace. Boy, well, what do you know? What do you? What the heck? Uh, th- maybe there's like a local designer that, oh, that it, does black la- necklaces that like you know. That that could be that could be, and then uh, you drive along the side of the road, and there's like in a rural area, and there's a bunch of houses that have like a, a star or something on it, and you know that some neighborhood guy made them and went around the neighborhood selling them, like for thirty bucks a piece. And it's probably a place that used to be a, um, a tanning salon or a, a fingernail place. Yeah, something, yeah, exactly. Now let's talk a little bit about birding by ear because you don't have a whole what? lot of. You don't have a whole lot of respect for birding by ear. I think it's one of the biggest scams in the entire sports world. Uh, Do you think there ought to be the commissioner ought to investigate the commissioner of birding? There needs to be an independent investigation. I think Congress, in fact, should launch an investigation. Do you think fraud is involved? Call Sibley as a witness. Oh. And call uh, Peterson. Uh Uh-oh. And call Audubon himself. That's what I'm saying. If uh, yes, yes, they're going to need a backhoe for a couple of those people, but uh, absolutely. But um, I should point out that I found the northern Parula warbler by ear. Remember, right when we walked into the boardwalk, we were fascinated and captivated by the antics of a very tame northern perula. And this is a beautiful warbler that has a yellow throat and a yellow breast. And then there is a blue-gray band on the throat with More orange like an underneath. Ascot. An Than ascot. An it is. It's an ascot-wearing bird. And I should, I mean, I, I have to tell the truth and tell you that I birded by ear and I heard where that bird was. And I said northern perula and then found the bird. Then you actually saw the bird. Yeah, then I saw. So the bird. you saw the bird. Well, I got to. What if it was a travelina warbler? Oh, is that one of those wild pigs? <laughs> no, it, it's the bird that imi- it's sort of, it's like a jay that imitates oh. other bird, other warblers. Oh, it's the travelina, Fred oh. travelina. Right, right. I got it. Uh huh. And and I guess that's a good point because what if it was a mockingbird that was mocking me? That's that's in, in essence what I was getting at. Mm. But I think that. See, now there's an instance where perhaps you could say it was birding by ear. But to me, as you know, and it's my opinion, you know, people don't have to share my opinion. This is my opinion, that it really doesn't matter until you see it. Yes, in other words, it shouldn't count, it if, shouldn't you're, count. if you're counting. If you're wand- wandering around and you're like, a, like on the World Series of Birding Day, like it is at Cape May, like what was it on the 10th? We got out of there just in time before that thing started. And Do they have teams? I don't know if it's teams or individuals or what. Is there a ball and bat involved? Y- yes, there is. And gambling. Oh. I'm sure there me has in. to be gambling. And so you... Because it's in Joyce? <laughs> yeah. Did you see any <laughs> real housewives when you were in Cape May? <laughs> <laughs> the real housewives of birding is really a, a good oh, show. Oh, oh I would like to see that. Yeah, that's quite something. But... We saw a couple housewives of birding today. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. They were. I might have to change the theme of my book a little bit. To what? The housewives. Just something I can interview some of these people for it. Mm. So but, anyway, what was I saying? Well, we were talking about what a good day we had today at uh, McGee Marsh. That we saw nineteen warbler species. Mm-hmm. And Should we go through what we saw? You mean list everyone? We could sing it. We could. 
maybe that's not what we need to do right now. No, because I can't find. Because there's I no, can't there's find the list. The list. Is gone. No, the list. See, now is that's gone. what I mean. You could have probably all those were, that you heard, and you couldn't even write them down because. You, the problem because is you, the list is wet. The problem is I spent an hour and a half with my um, arthritic hand writing the list, and then I promptly used it as a coaster. A <laughs> coaster. Well, yeah. yeah, that's right. But how can you possibly hear a bird and consider it a sighting? That's an oxymoron. It is an oxymoron. A, a hearing isn't a sighting. No. But it's still a record of the existence of the bird. But 1919, and in some cases it's enough. What if you said, oh, I just, I, just heard, I just heard it. I just heard it. Did you hear that? No, I did. What if you have a recording of it? What if you recorded it? Well, that's... I just identified a bird that you showed me a video of based but on the song. But it was on the song. video. You knew it before I, I, you, you even no, heard No, I, I didn't know song. it by the, by the look of the bird. I identified it by the um, sound of the bird. Mm-hmm. The English sparrow. The English sparrow. That's right. It had he had an accent, and um, there was a little tea bag in his foot. <laughs> he was clutching a tea bag, and uh, I think it was Tetley. 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 Yes. Tetley. Tetley. Tet. 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 So tomorrow we are going to go back and have another go at McGee Marsh and see if it's going to be uh, as good as it was today. Because we hear that uh, because of this cold front that's coming through, they don't expect another wave of migrants to come in. You know, migrants are always welcome. Right. So they expect that the birds that are already here are going to, in Ohio, right, crossing the border from from Indiana, they're just spilling over. (laughs) And uh, so we expect to see the same birds tomorrow, the exact same birds. And they'll probably recognize us and um, say, hey, you guys were here yesterday. (laughs) Wow. Really? Yeah, that's an excellent call. That was a prairie warbler. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to take a break, and when you hear from us again, it'll be tomorrow, and we'll be talking about whether tomorrow lived up to today's expectations. So you're listening to, and you can tell from this show that this took a year to produce. Oh, a year. Every minute for a whole year. Yes, and I I hope you don't feel shortchanged, especially on short wave. <laughs> <laughs> so uh going to go to a word from our sponsor, and we will be back tomorrow for us. Wait a minute. Just a couple of minutes for you. And that's because of the magic of radio. Wow. What were you thinking? We'll be right back after Bob gets the ducks out of his living room. Don't go away. Life Radio, the number one pet radio network on the planet, joins forces with iHeartRadio to put the power of your pets in your pocket. Awesome. Download the iHeartRadio app and rock Pet Life Radio on your phone, on your tablet, on your Xbox, in your car. Pet talk, pet tunes, and fun pet times. Pet Life Radio and iHeartRadio. Positively possum. It's dinner time oh. in America. Where more pet parents trust PetSmart for natural and expert recommended foods than any place else. And now, we've added more than 100 new varieties to our already wide selection of your favorite brands. Like Simply Nourish, Authority, Wellness, Science Diet, and more. Do what's best for your pet. At PetSmart, happiness in store. Go to PetSmartDeal.com to find out this week's coupon code and save up to 30% on food, treats, toys, and more. And get free shipping on orders of $49. Go to PetSmartDeal.com. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Gansert, President and CEO of American Humane Association, the country's first national humane organization, here to tell you about our new show, Be Humane, on Pet Life Radio. Each week, we'll be bringing you the latest news and issues affecting our animal friends, and we'll also be bringing you interviews with Hollywood's biggest animal advocates, here to share tales about their pets and what they're doing to promote a more humane world. Our own highly experienced staff and friends the organization will also join us each week to share what they're up to in the animal world. I hope you'll stop by. Until then, let's always remember to be humane. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Radio. <laughs> 
Oh, Bill is. Oh, this is uh, it's seven in the morning, and I just I feel terrible. How do you feel? I I don't know. I'm not. It's I mean it's getting up at seven. That's just that's just the worst. I'm usually up at five chopping fruit into little pieces for the parrots. So this sleeping in the two extra hours, it's uh, giving me a bad case of warbler neck. I had these uh, had these really stubby, poofy pillows, and I I dreamed all night that I was laying on somebody's s'more. So so Bill, I think no maybe, s'more, please. I think maybe we ought to apologize for last night's podcast. Bill had had a little alcohol, and... I did not. And I was under the... Oh, oh, wait, oh, oh, not so loud. Not so loud. Sorry. And and I was under the influence of a sugary beverage. (laughs) So, Bill just went downstairs to investigate the breakfast bar, and what did you find out? I'm sorry, the breakfast buffet. We won't (laughs) say the word bar. Wait, well, the bar is open? (laughs) What did you find in the buffet? I found... Eggs made of styrofoam, and I found sausage made of ground-up sponges, and um, and biscuits. What was the main ingredient in the biscuits? I noticed that uh, one of my pillows was missing after you went downstairs. <laughs> they are called s'more biscuits. Uh-oh. Well, what do you think? Should we eat here, or should we go out to a little... Oh, I want to eat here. Okay, good. Because the only reason I thought maybe of going out anywhere was I need to get some ones. Some ones? Yeah, because yesterday I forgot to tip the birds. You know, it's only polite after they show up to... Oh, I see. I thought that was a birding term of some sort that you were playing off of. No, no, it's like, just... Like, so that's a prank. Well, it just dawned on do. me when that prothonotary warbler, there was a prothonotary warbler that just stayed so close to everybody. He was, what, three feet away at the most on the ground? At most. He was hanging around for a tip. You're right. He did have his wing out. Yeah, so, I don't know, we might have to stop somewhere and, and get some onesies. And then also get some dollar bills, too. Yeah. We'll <laughs> so we're headed back to McGee Marsh, and uh, we'll we'll let you know how it goes and uh, see if we have anywhere near the fun that we had yesterday. If we do anywhere near, it'll be a successful fun day. All right. TTFN. So we just came back from uh, breakfast. Whoa. And Whoa. How would you assess that breakfast, Bill? It... Uh, it's going to have long-lasting effects. And what more can you ask for from a breakfast? Right, right. Now, I noticed one of the guys down there gave himself away as being a birder. How is that? He said to the attendant, Maid, 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 put on the tea kettle ettle. <laughs> really? I, uh-huh. I didn't even hear that. Mm-hmm. Well, you have a cute... You bird by ear, so mm-hmm. how would you identify that? That would be a song sparrow. Exactly. I don't want to embarrass you, but uh, I just took a shower and I noticed you uh, left your body wash in the uh, shower. That was not my body wash. Now, if you left that for me, I don't really need it because I spent uh, two months in a talc mine and my skin is silky smooth as a result. Wow, but, but I knew that you. joke would pay off. <laughs> okay, so we're on our way to uh, McGee Marsh. And this, this time, yesterday, Bill missed the morning warbler. That was the one bird that Bill missed. I missed the oh, Nashville God, that, warbler. That made me so angry. Bill missed the morning warbler, but I can guarantee that you're going to see a morning warbler. <laughs> 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 because it's 8 a.m., get it? <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I mean, I got it because I'm here all the time. Our listeners don't necessarily know what time it was. Oh, so here we go. Hi, we're back. Uh, Bob Tart and Bill home after that exciting little uh, wake up segment. And wasn't we, that entertaining? That was really good. I liked it quite a bit. So we just got back from McGee Marsh or Maggie Marsh, as some people call it. And did uh, you ever find out the official name of that? I saw a report on uh, CBS or NBC News about the place, and they called it McGee Marsh, and that's good enough for me. Really. Yeah. Okay, was it John Chancellor? It was Eric Severide, so maybe it was ABC. <laughs> I guess so. So we had to uh, dodge raindrops today, didn't we, at the very end? <laughs> oh, yes, we did. were dodging raindrops. But uh, it was kind of, uh, weather was iffy, iffy, iffy. Mm-hmm. But uh, we had a pretty good morning. I would say we had a pretty good uh, two days at McGee Marsh. 
I'm going to take one moment and explain to our listeners that oh. we go to McGee Marsh for the migration of wood warblers. Wood warblers. These are colorful little birds. I believe there's 30 some species of these colorful little wood warblers in the United States. And what, uh, what? in what the United they? States. What are they? Wood warblers. Okay. If they could, would they? And they do. They're migrating and they mass at McGee Marsh while they wait to cross but it's Lake Erie. Well, some of them are uh, Fifth Day Adventists. <laughs> So anyway, we saw not as many wood warblers today as yesterday, and I believe that's because of the cool front that pushed through. The cool front did not bring any more migrants, and it may have... Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. How, I think that it may have brought some down from Michigan, like us. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. But other than that, there really, I don't believe, were any new birds Although I saw more black-throated blues today, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw more black-throated blue warblers today, too. How about you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I have the blues. And there were quite a few bay-breasted warblers today. I have a theory. Go ahead. The reason we didn't see as many wood warblers today was because we didn't bird as hard. I don't think... I don't think... Our birding was 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 like at a hundred percent. No, no, I was at forty percent. Uh -huh. I was at a solid forty percent. I mm -hmm. guess it's because yesterday was so exciting. I had the whole day ahead of me, and today I wake up and I know that I'm going to be home this afternoon, and just the excitement. <laughs> just God, what a, <laughs> no, the excitement oh, really isn't you there. Bear it. Oh my! I didn't realize. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Don't, don't shed a tear for me, though. I'll be <laughs> all right. I, I'm sorry. I did not know. Yeah, but uh, we saw a couple new birds today. Mm -hmm. Saw a. I have never seen a woodcock uh, before. <laughs> <laughs> no, either have I. <laughs> and there was that's one, not a wood warbler, is it? No, a woodcock is a snipe-like bird. Uh huh. And there was a woodcock that had a nest just inside the boardwalk. It and was the cutest thing. It was. It has a long snout. Uh huh. <laughs> Very long. Actually, it's a beak. It's not a snout. But um, uh, speaking maybe of that, maybe that was a taper we saw. It could have been. That reminds me of the joke yesterday when a guy saw a couple of swans and he said they were so far off he couldn't tell what kind they were. And I said, maybe they were elephants. <laughs> and he didn't appreciate that too much. I, <laughs> but a joke I made today, would you like to mention the joke I made today? Which one? There were like six or seven of them. Well, there was the pretty unusual bird, an olive-sided flycatcher. Oh, yes. And do you know what the call is of the olive-sided flycatcher? Extra dry! Extra dry. It actually, the call is uh, written down as quick three beers. Quick well, three beers. It's not far off. No, no. You, so you were right. Some people were looking at it, and then the bird flew away. And I said that shortly it would be joined by a pickle-sided flycatcher. Yes. The woman standing next to me said, pickle? But then some other people were in on the joke, and a, a woman came up to me and said, I believe it's a member of the condiment family. And that's actually a better joke than yours. I wasn't sure if that was a come on or not. I was oh. doing pretty well with the ladies today, wasn't I? Oh, you were doing great with the ladies. You were you were like a superhero going from lady to lady pollinating your knowledge. I was. I would see a bird and then I'd see a woman who looked like she had a glint of passion in her eyes for seeing that bird, and so I would glide <laughs> over and I'd say... Oh, it was something to see. And I would say, uh, pardon me, madam, but there's a red-eyed vireo right over your head. Mm -hmm. And so that went well, and I, I was helpful. You were helpful, too, because with in the thrush department. Oh, I, I identified a thrush. You did. Uh -huh. You were a real Napoleon solo when it came to putting the finger on the thrush. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> so would you like to tell that anecdote? I'm feeling a little Ilya after lunch as well. We just had, had some fast food. Yeah. We won't name we the won't. Uh, vendor. <coughs> Arby's. <coughs> Roast beef. So uh, would you like to talk about your identification of that bird? Well, I had seen one of these thrushes in the backyard. 
our backyard, my wife's and I's backyard. And uh, it was clearly a Swainson's thrush. And so that was fresh in my memory when today I saw a thrush and everyone was puzzled by it. And I said, Swainson's, you morons. And, 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 and fi- gradually word spread. But I do have to say that no one gave you much credibility just as I identified two or three birds today and there was just a lot of tutting about uh, I was probably wrong. Until that was I from the husbands of the... Ah, of, of, of the women I was charming. Uh-huh. But someone verified that it was a Swainson's thrush but made an erroneous comment about the yellow on the around the head. A little bit I of thought yellow. it was a hedge. I didn't think it was a... Uh, was it an actual, what do they call it, what you call it? A, a second, I second that identification, confirmation. And she was sort of hedging. I thought she was, she was trying to suggest that it was a gray cheek by saying that that it has the Swainsons has yellow, but so does the gray cheek in certain light. In I'm thinking, certain it, light. In certain light, how I mean, it's yellow. It's either it's yellow or it's not. If the sun comes in at a certain angle, oh, it's yellow all of a sudden. I mean, there's no color except in certain light. Exactly. So I thought that was that's the kind of thinking you'd expect on the estuary trail, not on <laughs> McGee Marsh. <laughs> so we also saw uh, an eagle nest, nest, an eagle's nest, and you, though, I didn't see it, but you saw... I saw an eaglet. A little bab A little baby stick his head up and go, ooh, ooh. So that was, that was a, a nice highlight. And the drivers, though, left something to be... They left a lot of miles per hour back on the road. They did. I could not believe it. They were driving nine miles per hour. And then they'd stop right in the middle of the road. And and you just had to sit there or break the law and go around them. I finally chose the latter. Well, and a couple times you tried to go around them, and then they would start going. And then they'd speed up and get right back in front of me. And we we kept looking around to see if there was anything they could possibly be looking at. I didn't even see a Canada goose sometimes. (laughs) Did you? No, I did not either. Uh uh-uh. uh. I didn't even see a swan like that guy saw, or I, a swan with his mate by Proust. <laughs> well, nobody saw that. No, nobody. And you, you had a real humorous remark. I did about Crane Creek when oh, when yes. we had it some started, precipitation. It started to drizzle a little bit, and I said, "We're going to Rain Creek." That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I outdid myself on that one. Yep, and I had a I had a good joke earlier that. When we were still in the hotel room, mm-hmm. Bill was emailing his young wife, Marsha, <laughs> and he was doing it on an iPhone. And, mm-hmm. you know, you can't use touch typing on an iPhone. And so I said, just like the birds at McGee Marsh, you're using the old hunt and pack. <laughs> that, that still that makes me laugh. I know. it. I know. We, boy, that we was, laughed at that. That was great. Yeah, they had that to send the great. hotel detective upstairs to see what all the merriment was about. <laughs> and then you told him that, what I said, and he started oh, he to just, laugh. he busted a gut. Oh, yeah. Yep. So I would say overall that it was a pretty good trip. It was much better than last year much better than the year before. What would you say about the demeanor of the birders compared to the demeanor of the birders in New Jersey at Cape May? The birders here compared to Cape May were were friendlier. They were less oblivious to those around them and um, actually generally less sullen. And in fact, I think they were even in better fettle than birders that were at McGee Marsh. Even last week, I would wager because the early birders catch the worm warbler. Oh, the worm-eating warbler? The worm-eating warbler. Wow, we did not and, see one of those. And uh, and so I think maybe some of the less intense, serious birders were here later on in the biggest week. Aha. Uh-huh. That's my theory. It's a theory. It was I, packed this morning, though. It was, it was packed, packed so much. We had to park in the second parking lot. I think, are there three parking lots or two? I don't know. I don't either. So I'll just say, I'm just going to make it up and say we parked at the second parking lot rather than the first. I'm just making it up. If I'm making it up, then that's fine. I can't say for sure either way. But I will say that maybe this is an example of reaping what you're sowing because you were so friendly and gregarious this morning that maybe that just lifted everyone's spirits there, and so they just seemed happier than normal. That might be, and I lifted their spirits until it started raining, and then uh, we, you and I, we just got the heck out of there. 
Well, we got off before it rained, didn't we? It didn't start raining till we went to, uh, we made a brief stop at Metzger Marsh, mm -hmm. and uh, nothing there. We birded the entire place out in how, how long? Two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes, yeah. There was a robin, and there was a red stark, and there was a yellow warbler. That was it in the whole place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's often that way. We One year we saw a ruddy turnstone, but... That was what, 1959? Yeah, but yeah. I think you you turned up the turnstone, as I recall. Oh, well, of course I did. Yeah. So I think that's about it. We have one other exciting thing uh, to mention, and it's really appropriate for uh, us signing off. But before we sign off, I'd like to say uh, special thanks to our producer, Hal Linden. <laughs> and he's been very good to us this year. And uh, thanks, Hal, for, for all your help. And thanks to our listeners. Uh, you can email me at bob at petliferadio.com as the rain Listen starts to, the to rain come health. on the roof. So we're going to let my GPS get the last word. So I'm going to say, are you there, Gypsy? Gypsy, are you there? Well, this is very embarrassing. Try it now. I'll try it one more time. Gypsy didn't seem to want to listen to me. I don't think Gypsy, I don't know why Gypsy didn't. Gypsy, are you there? Say a command. Go home. Start new route or add to the active route. Add to active route. Main menu. Please drive to highlighted route. Well, that's a big help. The highlighted route. Well, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> and that's what I hope you do in life, oh. is please stick to the highlighted route. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, everybody. Thinking about buying a monkey? How about a ferret or a skunk? Then check out the show that will answer the burning questions, where do you get them? What do you feed them? How do you take care of them? And most of all, what were you thinking? With exotic pet expert and author Bob Tart, every week on demand from PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs>